Good morning, everybody. Special shout out to Gary and Scott. Scott, I missed you on the subscriber list, so that is my bad, but I told you I was gonna give you a big shout out, so here it is. Guys, we are on location at Orlando Longwood Auto Auction. Currently sitting inside of a G37. And I did get a really good look at those cars again to see if uh, my thoughts had changed. And I think I've whittled it down to the Yukon XL. And there is an Infiniti QX56, which is pretty much a Nissan Armada with some fancy parts on it. Um, and this thing, which, let's see if that window works. It's actually a nice little ride. It's got miles on it, 120 on the miles. The window switch here is a little touchy, but outside of that, nice car. You know, back a while ago, I would have loved to drive something like this, but I just don't. Small cars like this, I'm not particularly a big guy, but I'm not really a small guy either. So I can't really drive stuff like this and be comfortable. Like right now I'm sitting all the way, this is as far back as this thing will go, and I'm really not even that comfortable in it. So I'm a big body SUV guy. I don't really care for that Mercedes, but if it's the right price, I'll still buy it, but it won't be a driver. That'll be something that we strictly buy to sell. But that Yukon XL and the Infiniti QX56 are at the tippy top of my list. So I figured I'll show you guys a couple of the units that I'm looking at out here. And then you guys know the rules. I don't take you inside the lanes. Strictly business. On this page, we're friends, but in there, well, I got to be professional. So stay tuned because the good stuff's coming. This. 2007 S550 with 209,000 miles on it. Oh, that means the key's in it. Oh, I have to start this thing up. I don't even have a choice. Let's turn the volume down. This thing don't even have a check engine light, bro. I am shocked. 209,000. I might buy this thing, dude. Backup camera work? That engine doesn't sound that great, though. No, it does sound good, doesn't it? Wow. And the interior is like shockingly nice. Back seats are in really good shape. I mean, this is nuts. How did this happen? And it came from Mercedes Benz of Daytona Beach of all places. I am in awe. Is this not wild? Look at this thing. Just look underneath. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go for 2500 eh, it's got some noise. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. Eh. That's not for us, but maybe it'll be for our in there. I don't like buying. I don't feel myself particularly wanting to buy this. What do you think, Mark? I'll buy anything. I know you'll buy anything. Anything. I don't even know how to open the hood. Oof. You think it's got some filler there? No, no, just don't hit it too hard. Yeah, it's like pushing all the way in. That's all right. 209,000 miles. I'm really not even a buyer on this, but I figured for the, for the people back at home, they had to see this. All right, guys, we're actually going to go and look at some cool cars. Fuck this Mercedes. Hey, right, guys, so this is it. We're going to see if we can get it. I don't know if we will, but we're going to find out. Not bad. <laughs> Bad, not bad, not bad. We're gonna find out. Again, I can't take you in there, but we're gonna see. 15 grand for that truck. Our character that we've already previously unlocked, Justin. Okay, this thing's got a check engine light. Not bad. Cold air? Listen to it. Doesn't sound all, all the worse. Justin, what do you think? Check engine light, some paint issues. I don't know about this thing, man. Old Zaru's and left. Old Mark, I saw him flick his hair to the side and he said, I'm out of this place. I think we're going to give it a shot. But yeah, no, no Yukon, but I did get something else that I'm going to show you guys here in just a minute. All right, guys. So if you guys heard, that Yukon did over $15,000 in lane. I personally think that's an insane price to pay for a 15-year Mostly clean, but not super clean Yukon XL with 180,000 miles on it. I wasn't going to be that guy, but, and we're at a stoplight, by the way. So, you know, I'm not driving and videoing here, but I was able to get five total, which is, honestly, I'll take it. It's not the best. It's not the worst. 
And since we didn't get the Yukon, the Tahoe, or the ML350, I looked at a big body GL 550 that I honestly was in love with. I thought this truck was so hot. It had the Desenio interior, just gorgeous. And this thing is a proper dad wagon. Just beautiful, beautiful car. That brought way over the money. So what I did is I went and found myself something that I would consider to be second best for good, reliable sedan. Went and got myself a Mercedes E550. 2010 model year with 150,000 miles powered by a 5.5 naturally aspirated Mercedes-Benz V8. Now, I know for a lot of you guys, you hear this, and I know there was a guy, I'll go back and I'll look at your name, brother, but I heard you loud and clear. Stay away from the foreign stuff. It's all shit. And, you know, sometimes I will agree with that, but that platform that that Mercedes is on is genuinely a really good platform. That 5.5 V8 they make is great. It's built well. It sounds very, very healthy for a Mercedes-Benz. So I took the risk. I bought it. And you guys are waiting to hear the magic number. I paid, drum roll, $6,400 for this car. Now, is that a steal? I wouldn't consider it a steal. I would consider that paying the money to have it. Um, you know, I paid fair money. I didn't get a deal. I just paid, you know, pretty much what it took to get out of it or to get into it. So it's green light. It's going to go through a post-sale inspection with Orlando Longwood. And we're going to see what happens. And in just a minute, because now we're moving and I can't really video and drive at the same time. The next time that you guys see me, we'll be on location at D&D. Right, guys, we're back on location at D&D. Got the sheet in here. Oh, Lord, what the fuck is that thing doing up on the lift, guys? We got our well, Jeep up on the lift. We just got back. That thing is up on the rack. Old Chris is in there selling his Kawasaki. What says you, Dave? Rub, rub, rub. This thing's actually not too bad. I just realized that it's sitting on an actual set of Ling Longs. But they're brand new Ling Longs, so you can't really complain about that. It's got surface rust. Nothing crazy. Apparently, this thing's got a nasty misfire. But I'm not joking. Not one leak anywhere under it. It's got a tiny bit of wetness right there. But, I mean, we're talking minimal, minimal. So, it's got a little drip right there. It hasn't dripped anything on the ground, though. This is a really solid truck, actually. And according to Dave... The O2 sensor is dragging, hopefully, dragging down the entire driver's side bank of cylinders since a 3.7. Davi, you're the move. Uh, so I work on cars and go to the NBA. Yeah, no kidding. So you're saying that, uh, well, he's the Mopar guy. He knows I bet our... you it's got a clog cap, but we ain't telling that yet. Clog cap? No. Now, how would an O2 sensor drag down all those cylinders? Well, you see, the flux capacitor gets the, the voltage from the windshield washer fluid. The windshield washer fluid sprays into the cap, but it's spraying too much, so the O2 sensor is getting inaccurate readings. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. Good, good. Honestly, well, clean. It's really clean. But in all seriousness, how does that happen? So that way the people at home understand this. Why is that O2 sensor dragging down? Because even I don't really understand. How is an O2 sensor dragging down? I mean, it's not dragging nothing down, but if it doesn't have a signal of how that starts burning, uh, you know there's something called closed loop, open loop, things start to misfire. It could not even be the O2 sensor, but it does have the circuit high O2 sensor code, so we're going to get rid of that code and hope it fixes the misfire. Otherwise, we have other things to dig into. Which means more money. Yep. For me. And, and we've got four grand. We've got about four grand into this giant. I try to find something wrong with it. Oh, you can find something wrong your with it. Your opinion is leaking. Okay, wonderful. No, 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 no. You don't. We don't need to look at everything that's wrong with it. He's, he's gonna find something that's wrong with this thing. So, we should be able to see on the other side here in a second what we picked up. We actually have customers on the way for these cars that just got dropped. They're not here for this. This is gonna be a tricky sale. I need to get all the money for it, but. 
really at the end of the day i think this is probably a 55 5900 car dave probably won't agree with me i think it's as worth as whatever a derelict will pay for it derelict that's the new derelict word. derelict that's the new word of the day we have a, a new thing it's a derelict employee of the month stand over old gum drop over there yeah well you know what they say i don't know what they say but they probably say that you know when you hire derelicts you're gonna have problems so, so let's go. we got lucky dave just took that jeep off the lift and as much as he hates it a 30 dollar part with a little bit of his labor fixed it and that is a ready to go unit so i think what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you guys what i got today at least the the print out of the sheet and we've got one i'm hoping i'm hoping one customer coming back how many subscribers do you have we're at 198 subscribers if we get to 200 subscribers tonight tomorrow's video will be assembling this come on come on guys We have fully built Ford 6.0 converted to Gen 4 LS. We just need to assemble it, but we need two, two more followers. Subscribers. Subscribers. So guys, now we, I don't know because I didn't. Look at that rotating assembly there. Look at that. Guys. The support that we've been getting is amazing. So thank you. And again, if you're liking this video, oh, we've got Air Force One sitting down on the job. We have been getting amazing support from you guys. So let's look at what we bought today, what we're selling, and then we're going to wrap up the video and hopefully actually make some freaking money today. Because I spent right around 20000 20, ish dollars. Wonderful. We spent about 20 ish thousand dollars at the auction today. So... We need to start selling and recoup some money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have what everybody's been waiting for, which is the list. I got it right here in my hand. So we're going to go to the other side of the shop. I'm going to give you a quick update on the people that were just here. And then we're going to cover this thing because this is important. And then I'll tell you guys what I owe for all these damn cars. Now, I write checks for all these, but that doesn't always mean the check's clear right away. So we're going to cover this, then we're going to cover, well, what it takes to really be in this business by the way selling these cars not selling expensive so, vehicles these folks came in for oh i don't know where it is they came in for my ford escape they weren't in love with it so i ended up selling them the kia sorrento i gave them a really 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 fair price i ended up selling it to them for 56 plus dealer fees that puts us right at about right around 1200 dollars in the positive this month, I'm really not focusing on the gross. I'm focusing on the volume. So if I can focus on getting about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars per vehicle, and I can do that about thirty, twenty-five to thirty times this month, which we should pace out to do that, then we're going to have a really, really, really good month here. But I did have some other folks that came in for the Forte that we have right at like thirty-three hundred dollars into. I offered it to them for 46, thinking that that was an amazing deal. Then they whittled me down even further to 45 and they said, okay, give us an hour, we'll let you know. So they're gonna miss out because I just posted that car for 49 and it will be sold by the end of the day, hopefully. If not, it'll be sold first thing in the morning. See that right there is something that even though spite is not a good thing, I, I almost wanna sell it to somebody else now. Cause when you come up and you beat me up on price, then you, you come back, oh, yo, you know, I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. That's fucking annoying. But anyway, I digress. Let's look at so, this list. What do we have? We have 2009 Ford Focus, 2010 Mazda 3 hatchback, 2010 Mercedes E-Class, 2012 tile, uh, Town and Country, and then a 2011 Hyundai Sonata. Now, unfortunately, you know, it kind of worked out for the better. So if you notice up here, it says PSI. That means post-sale inspection. That Mercedes failed horribly on its post-sale inspection so we are not owning that vehicle anymore which is unfortunate because now i don't have a driver but let's look at the important stuff right if you notice down at the bottom twenty thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars but we're taking you know sixty what is that sixty seven hundred dollars off of that price so we really got you know four solid cars for right around uh call it yeah 14 grand 
somewhere around there. So really, really good numbers. But let's go down the list. I paid $3,600 right about for that Focus, $3,900 for the Mazda 3, the Mercedes does not count. I paid $3,300 for the Town & Country and $3,300 for the 2011 Hyundai Sonata. So totaling right around minus that number, obviously right around like $14,000-ish. Currently on our books, I just found out that um, I owe right around $75,000 to various auctions and various individuals for vehicles that we have purchased that are here currently. Now, this place looks empty. I understand that, but you know, we owe a lot of money out. Now, I'd like to preface by saying I've never written a bad check a day in my life. Every single one of those checks are going to clear, but I kind of didn't know what I owed. You know, you write, go to an auction, you write a check, and that's kind of the end of it. You kind of just say, okay, on to the next one. And you, you keep writing, you keep writing, you keep writing. And the next thing you know, you're like, man, I got a lot of cars that are coming in. What do I even owe these places? Problem is I got a couple of heavy, you know, hitting cars. I've got stuff like the Ram that, you know, I have to check has to clear for $7,500. I had, well, had that Mercedes. Check was going to have to clear for $6,500. And the list goes on and on and on. So you're talking almost every car is around $3,500 in, you know, actual true costs times that by, you know, like 15, 18 cars. It adds up quick. So if you ever thought about being in this business, make sure you got some money to, to start up with and don't buy any crazy expensive cars because you won't be able to afford them. And I pay cash for all my cars. By cash, I mean check. I don't use a line of credit. I don't use, uh, you know, OPM, other people's money. And that's a smart way to run your business. Uh, if you'd like more business advice, feel free to watch some videos from Mikey Pipes, my dad, and he can maybe get you, get you some good information. But uh, outside of that, I'm not the guy to go to for business advice. I'm here to show you guys what's going on at the Idiot Factory. So I think that's a wrap for today. Really didn't get a whole, whole bunch accomplished except taking a deposit on that Kia Sorento. But tomorrow's a whole new day. Guys, I really appreciate you uh, following these, this channel commenting on all of our uh well commenting on all of our videos and making my day exponentially better i really appreciate it seriously from the bottom of my heart thank you this is a small channel we've only got 190 some thousand or 190 subscribers uh on the page currently and we're really hoping to push that to 200 on to 500 and so on and so forth and who knows maybe one of these days we'll be at 100,000. but that's a long time from today i again appreciate it Stay tuned because we got some good stuff coming tomorrow. Love all of you. Talk to you soon. Ciao.